This is a revision video for earth structure and plate tectonics. The earth is divided into layers. Starting at the outer layer, we've got the crust, and then the crust and the top part of the mantle is called the lithosphere. Now when we are talking about plate tectonics, these two pieces of the earth become particularly important. We've then got the mantle, the liquid outer core, and the solid inner core. Also, if we zoom in a bit further to the crust, so if you look over here, you can see that the oceanic crust is a lot thinner than the continental crust. If we zoom in a bit further and take a closer look at each of the layers, um, we will start with the inner core. The inner core is extremely hot. It's at, at 4,000 degrees C. It's made of iron and nickel, and it is a solid inner core. The outer core is a liquid, and it is under huge pressure. It's got all the weight of the mantle and the crust on top of it. The mantle is extremely hot, and it flows like a very thick liquid. So it's almost, almost, almost solid, but not quite there yet. It's a very thick liquid. The crust is our top layer. It's by far the thinnest layer of the Earth. And it is 6 kilometers to 90 kilometers thick in some places. It's solid, and we say that it kind of floats on the, mount, on the mantle. The thickest part of the crust is going to be the continental. And the thinnest part of the crust is the oceanic. The crust of the Earth is divided into tectonic plates. If we look at this diagram, we can see that where we have tectonic plate boundaries, we have certain hot spots for volcanoes and earthquakes, certainly. Now it must be noted that not all volcanoes occur at the edge of a tectonic plate. So for example, Hawaii is in the middle of the plate, but it's a volcanic island. But overall, or generally, the plate boundaries are regions of earthquakes, volcanoes, and constructive plate boundaries. Right, the tectonic plates are kind of floating on the mantle, which means that they can move, and they can move in different ways. They can come apart, they can collide, they can scrape sideways or past each other. Now, when we're talking about volcanoes, we tend to get oceanic crust, because it is more dense than the continental crust, it sinks underneath it. And then because of the heat and the pressure, that rock will turn into magma. And then when the volcano erupts, it will come out through the top of the volcano. Where you've got plates that are scraping sideways or past one another is where you get earthquake hotspots. Now, the reason that the tectonic plates move is due to convection currents in the mantle. So imagine there, we've got our crust, and I will cut it up into plates, and then we've got the core here. Core generating a lot of heat. Now, you should know that when we heat particles, they gain more kinetic energy, they move around more, and they take up more space. This makes them less dense than their surroundings. So here, where the core is really hot, it heats up the mantle. That bit of the mantle become less dense and floats to the top. And also, this is happening at this side as well. And this floats to the top. Now, because at the top, it's a lot cooler. So around here, it's a lot cooler. The particles will lose kinetic energy and therefore they'll become more dense and fall back down. Now if this happens at both sides, so you've got one of them moving right and one of them moving left, 
they will move apart. The process can happen all over the mantle. So imagine now we're here. I have got this plate that's going to be moving to the right and this plate that's going to be moving to the left. You can see that this is, will be a region where we get subduction. So the movement of the tectonic plates is all due to convection currents within the mantle. Now the heat from the car is thought to be generated by radioactive decay. And now we come on to continental drift theory, which was first proposed by Alfred Wegener. Now what he noticed was that when he looked at a map, the, the uh, continents looked like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And when he put them all together, it formed a massive supercontinent, which he called Pangaea. Now, at first, some people thought that this was fairly radical. But over time, they started gathering fossil evidence. So, finding the same fossils in this part of South America and this part of Africa. When, in reality, if those are two separate continents the same animals would not have evolved exactly the same. So this is further proof that these continents were once joined together. So the same animals, because they used to live in the same area until the plates moved apart. It's now quite a well-accepted theory of how the continents used to look. And the tectonic plates themselves are still moving. Underneath the surface of the earth, most of the rock is solid. Some of the rock does melt and is known as magma. It then moves up to the surface of the earth. When it's at the surface, it is then known as lava. This lava cools down and solidifies and it forms igneous rocks. The word igneous itself means from fire. Now, igneous rocks contains crystals. The size of the crystal depends on how fast they cool down. The slower the rock cools, the larger the crystals are. The faster the rock cools, the smaller the crystals are. Two igneous rocks are basalt and gabbro. Basalt is really, really rich in iron. And it has small crystals, which indicates that it was in a region of volcanic activity where it cooled quite quickly. Gabbro is also rich in iron, but it's made from larger crystals that cooled slowly. So that must have been in a hotter area where it took a long time for the rocks to cool down. Now we're all aware of the dangers of living near a volcano, the obvious eruption and destruction it can bring. However, some people do choose to live there. Now, one of the main reasons is that volcanic soil is very fertile. It's really rich in minerals and plants can grow really well. So farmers growing crops there can get a really big yield. Not all volcanoes are the same though. Some erupt lava that runs down the side. Others erupt thick lava that takes a long time to run down. And those that erupt the thickest lava are the, often the most violent of volcanoes. 